Happy June. July. Happy July. It's been a good month. Summer always makes me happy. I'm not sure I can say it's been as good of a reading month this month. Oh man. It's been interesting at least, I will say that. <laughs> so I think in my last wrap up video, I said I was like a third of the way through A Crown of Swords. I am now closer to two thirds. This has not been a priority read. This has been like a background read, mostly listening to the audiobook. And I guess there's some disagreement on when the slog in the Wheel of Time starts. Generally, people say around book eight. Some people say book seven is when it starts, others around book nine. I feel like it's beginning because as far as like plot points and stuff happening, there hasn't been that much. It's starting to really expand into lots of extra details, which Maybe seems humorous to say that at book seven. The entire series is expanded with lots of details. But as far as the slog, I think it will be a good part of the series to rely more on the audiobooks, especially during the summer when it's less of a sit inside during bad weather and read time of year. <laughs> it can be a little more active and still listen to them. So maybe by the next wrap up video, I'll be able to say, I finished it. Maybe I'll even make a video about it by then. And then this month I read Stone and Sky by Z.S. Diamante. I've already made my review video, so I don't want to talk too much about it. I do admire him as a person. He's written his books, he's put them out there. He's doing a really good job of his marketing. As far as the story itself, I'll say it was not for me. I don't do star ratings, so I will not put it on a scale of one to five, but I will also not be reading the rest of the series which is kind of disappointing. I was hoping to love it, especially knowing that it was going to have griffins and weverns and magical steeds. I was hoping to like it better than the book I read last summer with griffins and weverns and dragons. <laughs> and then on both sides of this one, I had just started A Wizard of Earthsea. In fact, I think I started it either the day or the day before that Stone and Sky came in the mail. <laughs> so I took a break from it and then came back to it after. Both of these books had a similar problem for me that was the telling instead of showing. And there was a lot of being told what's happening instead of immersing me in the scenes and the action and the feelings. I wanted both of these to go a little deeper and expand more and do more of the showing instead of telling. I'm also going to make a full video on Earthsea and my feelings about it. I was kind of disappointed. It wasn't what I expected. It wasn't what I wanted <laughs> and it was fine. Her writing style is pretty good. It's just not what I wanted. And then I was kind of in the mood to read some of the other stuff that I've had on my shelf. And if you've been watching my videos for long enough, I think I made my video on my backlog of books right at the end of 2023. So still sitting inside my little lantern here, I still have the sheets of paper with my backlog of books written on them. And I'm gonna take one out. There's more in here than I thought. Three of them are Shannara books. Shannara. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Ah, here we go. Dawn Thief by James Barclay. I didn't finish it. I DNF'd it. It's been on my shelf for a while. It has cool art. The swords look cool. It's supposedly supposed to just be like a fun adventure story. Lots of action. It's book one of the Chronicles of the Raven. The Raven is a group of people, swords for hire. For years, their loyalty has been only to themselves and their code, but now there's like this big, possibly world ending threat that they're going to have to help deal with. They're kind of getting to the point where they're feeling old, not sure they're as up to the same kind of fighting that they were before, <laughs> but they're still mercenaries. They still need to make money. And so they're trying to decide what they should do. And I stopped right about the time they got hired by somebody to come help them with whatever they needed help with. I don't know, it was, it started with action and a lot of characters. So it was hard to keep track of who was who. And because it started with action, it was hard to care. I hadn't been given a reason to care about these characters yet. And so when their lives are in danger, okay, I don't even know you. Do I care that you're being chased by a dragon? So I made it to page 60. I think that's a good fair shot 
at a book. I could kind of tell from the beginning that it wasn't really what I wanted to read, but I wanted to give it a fair chance because some books pick up a little way in. But because it was part of my backlog, I told myself that I would try them all and be willing to DNF them because I want to read the books on my shelf and enjoy them or not have them taking up space on my shelf. <laughs> so this will be one that I say bye bye to. Maybe Earthsea too. I don't know yet. So anyway, once I put this one down, I wanted to try another book from my backlog. And so I decided to try Mistress of Dragons by Margaret Weiss. Weiss, maybe. She is an author who often pairs up with Tracy Hickman. And I have read, have started, <laughs> a book by both of those authors that ended up being like too much action, too little plot. This one, I am only one chapter in so far. And I can tell so far by her writing style that I might enjoy this book, depending on what happens in the next couple of chapters. It did start by introducing a character and what the character was doing, which she was going into, she's a priestess, she was going into the temple to use the magical object to observe their area. And she sees an enemy headed towards them. And so she runs off and rouses the garrison. So there's a character introduction, a plot introduction, some action had begun, but it didn't start with the action, which I appreciated. <laughs> this one's from, I think, 2003 or 2009. As Anne McCaffrey is to science fiction, Margaret Weiss is to fantasy. We'll see. 2003. So it is 21 years old. It shouldn't count as an old book yet, right? Still from the 2000s. Anyway, I'll give this one a fair shot. Maybe I'll give it about 50 pages before deciding to finish it. And then for July, I don't think I need to read Defiant. Oh. As soon as I was worried I would have to, I felt kind of rushed to try to squeeze it in. And I watched an interview with Michael R. Miller. He's still not done with the fourth book and he might not be by the end of this year, which kind of takes a load off for me. Because I'm getting an arc of the fourth, I wanted to make sure I had this one read. Now I don't have to feel rushed and I feel like I have time to read some other things on my shelf. And also I wasn't sure I was in the mood to keep continuing another series just yet. I was kind of in the mood for other books that I haven't read yet. Maybe a few more books that were a little on the shorter side. So for July, I might go through a couple more of my backlog books. I have a couple more down there that seem to be calling to me. <laughs> and then once I feel like I've had my palette good and cleansed, I will continue the Stormlight Archive Bridge 4 read. If you have read the Stormlight Archive, you know that following Bridge 4 is going to become a little more complicated. Maybe not in this one, but by Oathbringer and Rhythm of War, it's going to be harder to keep track of Bridge 4. I won't say too much because I know it will be spoilers for some people, but I do plan on continuing and trying to do all these before December. <laughs> Actually, maybe before November. So there's time for a read along of Rhythm of War. That's just gonna be a maybe for the next few months. Also, speaking of palette cleansing, then getting back to it, getting back to series and authors I've read before, I think what I'll do, I do want to read The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynne, and I did pick up the next Robin Hobb trilogy. That's the wrong one. <laughs> They're both red. That's wrong too. What am I even holding? All right, my Robin Hobb books are out of order. I'll fix them later. And I don't know what order these go in. Ooh, okay, the Tawny Man trilogy. So I have read the Farseer trilogy, the Life Ship Traders trilogy. This is the next one in the realm of the Elderlings, which I desire to continue. I think I read the Live Ship books last summer. So it's time to get back to that world. These were part of my Powell's bookstore book haul. <laughs> and once I read this trilogy, I'll have read all the books from that book haul, which means I'll be able to buy more books. I mean, I can buy more books. Anyway, between The Fool's Errand and The Hunger of the Gods, I think I will host a poll on my Patreon and see which one I should make a reading vlog of. So my very first reading vlog, which I put out in June. That was kind of experimental. <laughs> I will try to figure out making it look better. I just used my phone for it. I did my reading vlog on The Shadow of the Gods. So it would be continuing the same series or first book in a new series. So if you are one of my patrons, you can be watching out for that 
poll coming up pretty soon whenever I'm ready to start one of these. And I am totally fine with the results of the poll being based on what you have read, because as a reading vlog, I want to be free to talk about all the spoilers. I did also put out my purse, purse, <laughs> I also very recently put out my first patrons only video, which I think if at any time you join my Patreon, you'll be able to go back and see whatever's there. It's getting kind of clogged up with posting the early releases of my videos. So I'm toying with the idea of posting early releases on Discord instead of Patreon. So Patreon posts aren't just in a whole big mix of early video, early video, early video, but I'll also post more about that. On Patreon. So if you were there, you know what's going on. I haven't had Patreon for very long. I'm still getting used to it. And this month, YouTube has introduced A-B thumbnail testing. They call it test and compare. They've been slowly trickling it out <laughs> and my channel finally has it, which means not all of you see the same thumbnail. So for you who watch my videos, this thumbnail testing probably isn't going to matter that much. It's more to see if I can draw in more people who haven't found me yet. <laughs> so if you notice some thumbnails that seem to stray from my normal thumbnail aesthetic, that's why, just trying some out. I don't know how far I'm going to stray. I'm trying little changes first. And then I think after a certain amount of days, it might be like 12 days, whichever thumbnail got the most clicks is the one that sticks. So in a couple months, looking back at my thumbnails, it'll be interesting to see what actually works on booktube because I have a feeling the booktube aesthetic and what people actually click on who are book readers might be different from people who watch other types of YouTube videos. I don't know. It's a theory. We'll see. <laughs> but it's fun to have access to a scientific testing method and I'm going to try to have fun with it. And I think that's all I was planning on reading. If I say I'm going to read more, I probably won't get to it. So I want to feel like I'm meeting a goal and not failing at a goal. <laughs> you can let me know what you're reading or if you've read any of those same books that I have or the ones I'm planning on. Thank you so much to my patrons for your support and happy reading. Bye.